back everybody. Today I'm going to walk you through the removal of the high pressure cylinder assembly. Whether you're doing a dynamic seal change or a hydraulic cartridge seal change or a plunger removal, the removal of the high pressure cylinders is the same process for any of those. So that's going to, what I'm going to walk you through today is the removal of it. Now we're going to zoom in down here on the high pressure cylinder. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is remove your high pressure fittings and tubing and get those moved back out of the way. Remember, for today's video purpose, um, a lot of these fittings and stuff have already got loose. Just fold your high pressure tubing back out of the way. Reach down and unclip your low pressure inlet water and just fold that down out of the way. The cylinder assembly is pretty heavy. Make a tool actually that goes underneath of it to support that weight as you're loosening. To put it underneath the cylinder, you're going to back take the tool apart, um, fold it up underneath there, put the other side on it. I usually hold my finger, index finger, on the back nut and squeeze the two plates together and tighten it down just a little bit. You don't have to tighten with a wrench or anything, just hand tight. And that supports that cylinder assembly in the weight as you're unscrewing the assembly itself. Leave it towards this end. You're going to stick your girth wrench on this end of it as you're unscrewing it, but leave it off center down towards the cylinder nut itself. To unscrew the cylinder assembly, you simply wrap your girth wrench around it. Uh, if you're going to be loosening, of course, you put it on there, wrap this direction. You wrap it the other way to tighten it. Um, you just pull down, it loosens. What I usually try to do is hold my one of my fingers in the wrench itself to hold pressure on it. And then you can just use it like a ratchet. Part way through it, if you notice that you're you're uh, getting closer to your bracket, just slide your slide your tool down. Once you get so far out and you think you're going to come out of your thread or your thread engagement, take your cylinder wrench off, slide your tool down just a little ways, and finish the rest of it by hand, providing a little support underneath your seal head housing. You'll feel it whenever it gets ready to disengage and you can kind of reach back and pull on it. I'm kind of in a little bit of a, for today's video, as you can see it would be better if you stand on the end of the pump and you're pulling on it. So we're going to move around. As you can see, part of the seal stack stayed in. Some of it stays on the plunger. That's absolutely fine. Okay guys, we've got our high pressure cylinder off and out of the way, so we gain access to the area to uh, change your hydraulic cartridge, as well as remove your plunger if it's needed. Prior to taking this cartridge backup ring and this stuff out of here, remember that this unit is full of hydraulic fluid. So to bring that level down to where you don't have a huge mess, you pull this proximity switch out and it lets that hydraulic oil drain back through the unit. So to do that, you'd undo your cable, 
and just lay it to the side. Take the two Allen head bolts out. When you pull those out, you'll notice that there's a small plate underneath. It's got an O-ring. When you pull it off, the proximity switch also has an O-ring for the top of the plate. I usually just keep those two made together and set them to the side. You usually want to give this just a little bit, maybe just a few minutes, to let it drain the hydraulic fluid back down before uh, continuing on to pull the snap ring stuff out. For today's video and stuff, of course, our unit doesn't have any hydraulic fluid in it, so we're going to continue. We're going to continue forward. To extract the snap ring out of the unit, you'll take a flat blade screwdriver. I don't know if you can see it really well, but there's a small spot in the snap ring that you can take a small screwdriver and fit in it. And you basically twist it, pushing the snap ring towards the center of the drive and using a small pick to get underneath of it. And you pull that snap ring towards you and you twist and you just follow it around and it'll, it'll come undone. The snap ring itself can go in either direction. Once you get to this spot, you're going to reach in and pull out the backing ring. Use your best way I found is to use your two index fingers and reach in. You can shake the plunger if you need to and pull that out. You can pull it off. Um, this area that's got the ground surface, of course, and the step on it faces your high pressure cylinder. The other side has got a uh, cut in the back or a counter groove cut in it to fit over the hydraulic cartridge itself. So you always want to put that in the right direction. To remove your hydraulic cartridge, you're going to use your tool that's made for that. The female side has threads that correlate to the OD threads on the cartridge itself. Slide it over the plunger. Until the threads come in contact, turning clockwise, it's completely engaged. Turn it a few turns and it'll, it'll start that initial pull on the cartridge. I usually use my hand as a wedge up here. So I stick my hand against it, against the cartridge, and turn as I push out with both hands. And turning it at the same time, and it'll come, it'll free from the, the drive. Then I unscrew the cartridge tool. Now sometimes these seals uh, in your unit, um, if you need to replace these, uh, they're probably going to pull off this plunger a lot easier. Today our seals are new and stuff and so they're pretty tight on this plunger. Yours when you pull them out probably aren't going to be near as tight as a new seal set. <clears throat> these cartridges can be purchased as a complete unit if you need to replace them. We also have those in uh, kits where you can put the new seals and stuff in them yourself. Most customers find they just buy the unit. The, to replace the seals in it can, can be hard to do sometimes. To extract the plunger, there's a series of pins in the end of the piston that hold the plunger head into place. To extract those, the other end of your plunger tool has some small flat spots on it with some ridges. You insert this into the piston where the flats are on the pins and when you turn it, it pushes the pins out to where the plunger head can be extracted from the piston. You turn it until you feel, feel it engage into the piston. It'll make a loud snap. <clears throat> Turn it clockwise until you feel that the pins have been pulled. You're going to hold on to the plunger and the tool at one time and pull back. It allows the plunger head to be pulled out of the piston. And so you'll set that to the side and we'll inspect these parts in just a moment. As you can see, I'm not sure if you can see in the video, but inside the unit, 
you can look back in there you can see that there's six retaining pins that whenever the plunger is in place they snap past the edge of the plunger head retaining it and holding it into the piston itself. We'll, we'll inspect these parts and we'll get our new parts and, we'll, and uh, I'll show you how to put this unit back together. Okay guys we've got our plunger and stuff removed from our hydraulic drive. We've got our new hydraulic cartridge laying here. Uh, to inspect some of these components, it really is straightforward. If there's no scratches or dents or where it's been spread or damaged during insertion or extraction, you can uh, reuse the snap ring. Um, same thing with your backup ring. Um, if there's nothing wrong with the surface that goes into your cylinder or if it doesn't have any dents and dings or where maybe where it's been dropped or you can show any kind of wear pattern. If it's got any wear pattern on the ID of the part, um, it should be replaced. Um, this one has, you know, for video purposes, of course, ours is new parts. Um, to inspect the plunger, these ceramic rods are pretty durable. Um, they last for a long time. But to inspect them, you can take a clean rag and wipe the surface off and get it under some fluorescent lighting. And you can actually look at the surface itself if you have any annular rings or surface scratches that run with it or around it, um, you can take a uh, scotch brake pad sometimes and you can kind of hit it lightly with that. Um, if that removes any kind of surface deformation, then fine. If it's any deeper than that, you can send them back to WSI and we can uh, put them on a the machine and repolish those for you. Um, or if the surface deformation is very bad, of course, you'll have to replace it. Um, the end of the plunger or the plunger head itself, if there's anything scarring or anything wrong with it or it looks like it's been pulled or moved, you would certainly want to replace the plunger at that point. Um, if everything looks good and you're going to reuse, then I'll show you how to uh, put it back into the unit. The retaining pins that are in the piston, um, they hit on this surface, this angle on the plunger head itself. So whenever you stick it back in there, they allow those pins to come out and around and they snap back in on the face. So to put them back in there, you simply put it in, align it, and you can either grab hold of it with your hands and kind of shake it in a circular fashion. Or what I like to do is get it lined up and pop it with my hand like that. It goes inside, <clears throat> then you can push inwards until you hear that snap. Once you hear the snap, take a view and you can actually see the pins around the plunger head and if you can if you've got those in there and they're snapped into place then you're you're good to go to the next step um, the next step we're going to put our new cartridge on um, i've already you can use a little bit of hydraulic oil for lubrication on your plunger or white food grade grease or green grease it uh, you can use just about anything just a small amount of it to make the the seals themselves uh, slippery. To push it on the plunger, you can get it started and do the same thing. Just kind of pop it with your hand until it goes over the edge. Then you can just push it with your fingers down the plunger. To push it the rest of the way into place, we're going to use our seal um, extraction tool. You can use it to insert these seals as well. Put it over top of your plunger screw it onto the threads and then you can simply push it into place unscrew pull it back out and you can tell if you if it's all the way seated up then fine if not you can actually take the seal tool turn it over and push it against it and make sure it's seated properly we're going to Put our backing ring on, make sure that the counter seat or the, the, the counter bore faces the hydraulic seal cartridge. You want this ground face towards your high pressure seal or facing out. Push it all the way back into place. You should be able to look in there and see the slot where you're going to put your snap ring. If that slot, if you can't see all of it, Sometimes you can take your seal tool and put it up there and use it kind of like a little bit of a slide hammer 
and give it a, a nice snap like that, it'll, it'll drive it into place. These snap rings can be a little bit of a chore sometimes to put in. Um, <clears throat> I like to start mine with it down and I'll kind of lay it in the bottom of the groove first. We can get that started and then I'll hold it with my finger as I use a screwdriver to hold down and push into the groove. Then I'll take a second screwdriver and just work my way around that side of that. And when you hear that little snap, you can actually see that it snapped into place. At this point, you've got your plunger back in along with a new hydraulic cartridge. Same process, showed you two different things that you can do on this. Now, uh, to, to finish that, you would actually stick your proximity switch back into place and tighten it down. When you final tighten your proximity switches, check your manual. Um, for different hydraulic units and stuff, there is a torque setting for these bolts on the proximity switch. So check your manual to, make, to get the specific torque setting on those. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll get back in this next scene and uh, I'll show you how to put the high pressure cylinder back on the unit. Okay guys, we're back at the pump with our high pressure cylinder assembly. I'm going to walk you through um, how to put, how to assemble the seal set and assemble your cylinder assembly back onto your drive unit. Um, I laid the tooth fresh out just to remind you, use uh, lacquer thinner, acetone, things of that nature, maybe some WD-40 or brake cleaner um, will work really well. Use a toothbrush and really get in there and wash and clean all that old goop out. As you can see, I've already applied new goop to the female threads. <coughs> as well as the male threads. Um, I've already got my high pressure seal set laid out in front of me. The orientation on the seal stack up, of course we'll go through it today, but on replacement parts the orientation is noted on the bag itself so that you don't never get backwards the orientation of the stack up itself. The first thing we're going to do is slide the brass backup ring onto the plunger. The next two rings have a red face. They're angled rings and they have a red face on one side. Both of those are going to go on next and the red, the red side faces the drive, faces the brass unit. Slide those all the way down against your brass ring. The next one that we're going to stick on is a full seal. It's captured on both ends with an O-ring and a metal. Slide it on next. And the last remaining is a half captured seal with an O-ring on it. The O-ring faces out towards your high pressure cylinder assembly. Once you slide the seal stack up onto your plunger out where it's, uh, you can still get to it. I take some FML2 uh, food grade grease and apply just a small amount to the outside of the seal stack. You don't need a lot, but just, just make sure that it's pretty slippery and, it's, and everything is coated. Once you do that, you can take your cylinder spacer and slide it out onto the plunger and push the seal stack up all the way in and leave that plunger on there to protect your cylinder and stuff and your plunger while you're reassembling your cylinder assembly. Now we're going to slide the cylinder assembly and turn it where you can slide it up over the spacer. Be very careful that you don't slam the threads against each other and damage those so move kind of slow all the way up until you feel it come into contact and then gently start turning clockwise.
Now there's two ways of uh, tightening this in here. Of course you can use your end bell wrench and use that to turn the entire unit. Or you can use your cylinder, your girth wrench itself. If you elect to do the girth wrench, wrap it around it. I always try to hold my finger in the back side of the link with a little pressure. And when you do that, you can kind of just create a ratchet type motion. When you get to the bottom, you'll feel it come against a dead stop. At that point, you can either use a rubber dead blow hammer, give a small uh, tap to the end of the wrench. Um, what I like to do is put my wrench up a little further, tap it a couple times with my hand. That's, that's all the tighter you need to get your cylinder assembly. Now, to remove the V-block assembly, you take the nut all the way off. Pull one side off and then tilt the other side down and bring it towards your body. The next thing that we'll do is install our high pressure tubing. Remember, if you take the side load off of your tubing and stuff, the gland nuts usually go right in just with your fingers. Once I hold my tubing into place, I'll give everything a gentle, just hand tight to hold everything in place. Once I get everything held into place, I'll go ahead and use my inch wrench and tighten my gland nuts into the fittings. And of course, you'll want to work your way all the way around to the rest of the high pressure fittings as well. Once you have all your high pressure fittings tightened and in place, you can reach around. Push your quick connect through the top hole. And re-engage it. Once you have your water connected, your high pressure fittings connected, I'd recommend starting your pump on low pressure. Uh, check all your fittings, all the weep holes on the fittings, gland nuts, bell housing nuts. If you don't have any leaks at that point, go ahead and switch to high pressure and recheck everything for leaks. If you don't have any leaks at that point, you're ready to go. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us via email or phone. They usually put that information at the bottom of the screen. Thank you.